Hello everybody, Konadra here. Welcome back to Automation. Uh, today we are in build 1111, which means that multiplayer has been added in beta stage. I'm going to work and try and line some of these up to do later. Uh, currently there's not very many people on and I realize that the lobby is mostly European and Australian based, so the time zones are a little wonky. Uh, if there's time, I will do one of these to show off at the end of this video. Uh, if not, I will certainly try and make sure I get some of those done for next episode so you can see how the rapid fire multiplayer is working. Uh, but for today, as I mentioned in the contest videos uh, last week, um, I want to do a start to finish car. And I want to use the knowledge we gained. Um, the knowledge we gained from the let's get it in here, the 90s Japanese engine recreation series that I did. Use the knowledge I gathered there to try and build a 90s sports car, a 90s Japanese sports car that is something that would have lasted. Because if you think about it, from about 95 to 98, all of them died. The 240 died, the Super died, the RX-7, the 300ZX, the 3000 GT, all of them. They just disappeared. Um, basically, the whole Japanese sports car industry collapsed. And the reasons for that, uh, the, I, I can only imagine the economy had something to do with that. Um, but there also, there wasn't a need for cars that were that ridiculously expensive um, in comparison to the normal family sedans. So we're going to see what we could have maybe done uh, better than they did and predicted the change in the market a little better. Um, we have some engines in the range that, that I'm thinking of built uh, you know, the 7M GTE, uh, unfortunately we're never able to do the 2JZ, but that's one that would be uh, in the same range. Uh, the RB25, uh, I'm sticking with these six cylinders because I'm thinking of a car that is pretty big, you know, and not, not necessarily your Integras, your Preludes, those kind of cars did do well. They, they kept succeeding when all of the bigger sports GT cars failed. So, I'm going to keep that in mind in designing this car. So, starting off with a new engine, I'm going to go with an inline 6. Um, V8 is something I considered, and Turbo 4 is something I considered. But an inline 6, uh, there's something really awesome about inline 6s, and it's that they're so, so naturally well balanced. Uh, I, really, I really think that's a strong configuration for a motor. And that's that's still the case today. BMW still swears by inline sixes because they're they're just it's a very profitable platform for a motor. Uh, I'm gonna go aluminum block. I want to keep it around two and a half liters. Uh, I want to have a bore and stroke about square, uh, but not necessarily dead on. So let's see. How close does that goes? 2504? I can live with that. I'm going to go with a cast iron crank. This first motor that I'm going to build is for our quote-unquote base model. So nothing nothing super fancy with it. Uh, it just needs to be good performing, efficient, uh, and something that's interesting enough for people to want to buy it. So I'm going to go cast, cast, and hypertactic cast gives us nice emissions reduction and it's a nice average piston and we've seen it in a lot of our 90s recreation series motors uh, the year I need to back down to 1995 I'm gonna start making this car right when they started to really fall apart uh, they're awesome in, in my opinion now I think so uh, they were ridiculously expensive fairly I hate to use the word low-tech, but they were. There was nothing overly high-tech about them. Uh, some of them had variable timing, stuff like that, but still, they, they certainly weren't pushing 
any boundaries engine wise in that in that era. Uh, top end dual red cam. Four valves per cylinder. Four valves per cylinder is what pretty much all the engines were using in that era. Uh, you could go five. German and uh, European manufacturers had a lot of luck with five valves per cylinder. Uh, unfortunately, it kind of restricts you from using variable valve lift, and that's something that I would like to look into. So I'm going to stick with four. Obviously, a aluminum head. GP pretty high compression. We'll go with 9.0. That's you know an average, average sports car motor. I'm gonna stick with that 40. I'm actually gonna go up 45 on the cam profile. I am gonna do VVT on the intake. That's pretty cheap. It only adds a one man hour. And I'm gonna go with VVL, which is a little bit more expensive and adds quite a few man hours, but gives you a Dramatic surge in, in performance. So I'm going to put that at an 80. Uh, top end, oh, I got to do the style, which I think I only have. Uh, I have a couple valve covers to choose from. Let's see. Um. Um. We'll go with that one. But I want it to be white. Yep, just like that. There you go, naturally aspirated. Fuel injection, multi point, as pretty much everything is in this era. Uh, but something they were not, and something that uh, only Toyota really got into in this era was throttle per cylinder. And they only really got into it on their four cylinder, four AGE motors. Um, I think I think that was something that, that maybe could have been looked at to. Uh, to beef up and make their straight sixes a little bit more exciting too. I'll just do a standard intake. This is just a normal car. Uh, that throttle per cylinder does add quite a few man hours and a lot of material cost, but the airflow is just, you get a ton of airflow through throttle per cylinder and your available power, uh, the available mods you can make to a car with individual throttle bodies is pretty much endless. You can you can pump some air and fuel through them suckers. Uh, so they're very look at that max power six thousand nine hundred fifty eight. <laughs> that calculation may be a little wonky, but still, the the point stands. Uh, okay, so back to this. This one's gonna be regular unleaded. Uh, good middle of the road mixture. About seventy five on the timing. With a sixty four hundred, hopefully we don't get any uh, valve float. 6400. Uh, let's try 6500. Why not? And on the exhaust, I'm gonna go with tubular because I'm really looking to get as much out of this thing as possible. Uh, that's something that Honda was very successful with with their four cylinders. When they made a motor, they got every ounce of power out of it as they could from the factory. Uh, versus other manufacturers like Nissan, Mitsubishi, uh, Toyota. They didn't always seem to do that. They kind of just made it and kind of just dialed it back, kept it, you know, cost effective. It made 30 less horsepower than it could. Oh well. For this one, I want it to make the power it could actually make straight out of the box. Really impress people and give them a reason to spend that much money. I'm not going to say this is probably not going to make more than 260. Uh, but we'll put a high flow cat, and reverse flow, and a straight through. So let's see where that puts us. Hundred and eighteen horsepower and hundred and seventy seven foot pounds torque. Very straight power band there. Uh, just a basically a diagonal line. That's that's a very comfortable car to drive when it has that. And a pretty flat torque curve. Um, good torque down low. Uh, one thing I like to look at is how much power does it make in about four thousand? Because when you're performance driving, 
4,000 red line is about where you're going to be playing around in, so... So at 4,000, it's making about 130, and then it pulls from there. That's, that's decent. Um, these cars were heavier, you know, the big sports GT cars, usually four-seaters, uh, not always, but usually four-seaters, usually between 3,000 and 3,500 pounds. So you've got some mass to move there. Uh, good. A good mean time between failures. I'm pleased with that. Uh, let's see. Fuel octane. Got room to breathe there, I believe. Yeah, up to 86. Uh, so what I'm going to do with that is bring the compression up. Let's try that. I'd like to make 230 is about where I'd like to hit. Twenty-three. Uh, still only eight hundred dollars and about sixty-four man hours. That's acceptable. I uh, brought that fuel up to eighty-five, which means I could maybe go up on the ignition timing a little. And I'm not getting any valve float or anything, so I'm going to go up to sixty-six hundred and see. Maybe we can squeak a little bit more out. Twenty-nine. If I have no issues, and I don't, um, still got room in the octane though. So let's go up one click or two there and see if it survives. I'll just do a quick little test here. Two thirty, perfect. I like it. Two thirty horsepower, hundred eighty-four foot-pounds. So a little bit lacking in torque, but not terrible. Uh, very responsive at forty-nine. 63,000 kilometers, uh, 63,000 kilometers, that could be its first maintenance uh, window if you think about it. And it's, it's not great, but acceptable for a car that is uh, of sports car nature. Economy, a little bit high, not, not great. Uh, emissions, emissions are okay as well. $710 per year on service costs, that's okay. So I think I'm gonna be happy with that. Now all I have to do is name it. I'm gonna go with Sport GT 25. Oops, I guess that changes changes the zoom there. Ah yep. <laughs> oh, now I've got a bunch of weird text in it. 2524. So that's Sports GT, Sports Grand Touring, 2.5 liters, 24 valves. So let's save that. But before we move on to making the car, I also want to make the uh, the high model engine, the performance model. What I'm going to do with that is come down off on the compression here, go up on the cam profile really up on that cam profile. Put a shiny red valve cover on there. Show we mean business. Ooh, I like that. That's like a chromey red. That's pretty. Pretty. Oh, anyway, um, and we're going to turbocharge it. I'm just going to use the performance factory turbocharger. Not uh, a ball bearing because we want this thing to spool up pretty quick air to air medium intercooler uh, no cheaping out on that like they often did we can only go for 11 pounds of boost try to make this thing live a, at least a good long while and I'm gonna put a performance intake on it give it a bit more fuel so it doesn't explode uh, let's see do I need, yeah, probably need to go to a 3 inch exhaust uh, yeah, let's go to a 3 inch. And we'll go with the straight through performance sounding exhaust. 
Right, let's see what we can do. Goals, I would like 330. 330 would be awesome. That's a 100 horsepower gain over the NA motor and would put it in this really awesome category of motors. Now, in 1995, in Japan, there was a gentleman's agreement. No motor would make more than 276 horsepower. Complete bogus. Uh, it's been tested time and time again. No, those motors did not actually make only 276 horsepower. But they were in that range. Uh, I wouldn't say many were over 300, so over 300 would be an accomplishment. Doesn't look like we're going to get there. It looks like it's going to explode. Just remembered why. <laughs> I forgot to improve and the uh, I forgot to increase the octane. So we're gonna go super unleaded. Let's try that again. Uh, the boost already, up to eleven, nice and solid. Very nice pull up the top with it. With that uh, Vero valve lift. Oh yeah, that's that would be a real fun car to drive. 4,000 RPM, you're making 200 horsepower, and then from there you get a whole other surge beyond that initial surge. So uh, not an extremely smooth power band, um, but something that would be really fun to drive. A uh, nice flat torque curve after you build boost. Mm. Is there anything I'd like to do to this? Let's see. Cost wise, 1200. That's actually less than I thought it would be. Uh, Octane. I could go up on compression. Maybe not that much. Nope. Not that much. <laughs> Overzealous. Still. Okay. Let's try that. Horsepower. It's not the 100 horsepower gain I wanted, but um, any more, and I'm gonna start killing this MTBF meantime between failure. And I just don't know that it's necessary. Uh, service cost to go up, going turbocharged, obviously. Uh, economy, not too much worse. It's actually about the same. Alrighty, so I'm gonna keep this one, and I'm gonna call it the. Is that on there? Yep. SG25-24T. Save that one. So let's go here, let's see. There's our two motors, the SG2524 and the SGT2524T. You got 230 horsepower and 305 horsepower. Um, so what that gives us is two motors, both individual throttle bodies, both pretty high performance, one that's pretty extreme, and one that would be very uh, livable. So where do we go from here? We go to the cart manager. All right, so we're going to make a new platform here. We're going to choose the rear wheel drive platform. Uh, one thing I haven't done a video on is that there is a coupe, or sorry, a sedan platform to work with now. But we're gonna stick with the coupe for the sake of this theme. Body color. Uh, let's see. How about a dark red? Eh, dark red's a little purple. That's a dark red. Looks like maybe they did a little work on the wheels as well. Possibly. That's something that certainly needs to be uh, addressed yet, and they have not gotten there. I'm sure they will. Alright, first off, I got to just this body some. This is a very, this is again a very Sylvia inspired body. Uh, and that basic shape is pretty obvious in it. Uh, the S15 is a car we never got in America for some reason because uh, it really was a good car. 
And although the S the the two forty was never a big sports GT car here, the S fifteen had grown to about that size. So uh, that's an acceptable body shape to be starting with. Oh, sounds like we got some new body adjustment sounds there. <laughs> Neat. I'm gonna want a pretty big, uh, uh, aggressive-looking nose. A pretty aggressive chin spoiler as well. Uh, Fender-wise, I want them to be somewhat aggressive. Obviously, we don't have wheels to fill them just yet. Okay. Chin that out even a little bit more. And then the roof. Uh, we're we're past the hatchback stage at this point, in my opinion. Uh, so we're gonna stick with a coupe. I want to do a coupe that has a little bit more stretch to it than usual. I uh, definitely want the C pillar to be behind the rear wheels. That is the case. Maybe a little bit more. And I'm gonna tuck the back end just a little bit, but not not to the point where it's straight back. Alright, stretch that windshield out a little bit. Yeah. Oh, this is a straight six, so we need a lot of hood. Alrighty, so now to the fixtures. We got lots of new fixtures to play with, and I have not done so, so this should be fun. Okay, let's see. These look new. Hmm, that's an interesting spot. <laughs> no, that's not where I intended them to go. Um, that looks pretty 2000s-ish, not very 90s-ish. Uh, let me see what else I can do with them. Ooh, that's funny. Ooh, that's even funnier. What if I shrunk them down some? Stretched them out. Ooh, okay, that's, that's a little weird the way it wraps. Maybe they're too far to the sides. And not low enough. No, I like them up high. Hmm. Let me stick with that one for now, and and maybe work with it some. So let's see. What else is there in here? Nah. Oh, we got a back button. I, just, I was I was using it, not even realizing that we had it. Uh, let me delete these. Let me try these. Okay, that's something I think I might be able to work with. Pretty flatten out. Not too much adjustment in those. Those are pretty Sylvia inspired as well, but not not to any extreme. Gonna flatten them out pretty pretty severely. Alrighty. And then let's do the bottom grill. About here, I'm pretty wide. Let's do another one, but upside down, about there. Looks a little dodgy or dodgy-ish, maybe. Uh, needs to be that one needs to be a little bit wider. There we go. But very aggressive looking. I like that. Okay. What else can I do here? Maybe a center grill? Or is that too much? Oops. That's not what I wanted. Yeah, that's too much. Don't need a kidney grill in there as well. Hmm. We got vents. We could work with those. Oh, those are new. For like the hood and such. Oh, uh, let's see. Or what I want them above the wheels. Pretty big. Yeah, that's pretty racy looking. Like that, but now back on subject. Okay, let's go for fence again. Okay, how about this one? Okay, but further pack. 
Alright, that's nice and aggressive again. I like that. Indicators. Go with a clear indicator. Mm, do we really need those with the uh, indicators in there? Probably not. Uh, can we do something like a fog light though? Inside of these. Let's see. Probably need to make these bigger. Let's see, how does that look? That looks a little funky. Let's take those out. Put those back down to size. Oh, I like this, please. Okay, let's get that out of there. Put those back. How about down here? Or even in here? Here and there, somewhere. Way down at the bottom. That's not too bad. Can I adjust these? Oops. Oops. Okay, good. Um, yes, she can. Alright. I like, I like the way that looks. Uh, for the front, I'm still thinking I need... Uh, I guess I don't really need a center grill. Keep it nice and aerodynamic. I like the look though. That looks real aggressive. And I, a nice smooth line but aggressive look. It's a little it's a little too flat right here, but we can work with that. Uh, we got badges. Let's see. Put that right there in the middle. Shrink it down. Make it nice and wide. That looks good. Now for the back. Oh, let's put some door handles on there first before, before I forget. Nice wide door handle. Alright. For the back. Gotta do tail lights as well. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Hmm. Let's, uh, I think I already had those. How do these look? Small is how they look. We put those there. Now can I rotate them up? Yeah. Rotate those up. But I would need something on the inside as well. Let's see. No, those don't match. Tail lights are always the hardest part for me. Um. These but real narrow, and real wide. And then let's do something a little weird. Yeah, that's pretty neat looking. Uh, those lines don't exactly match up though. Let's see what we can do about that. Can we? Is there a nice square one? No, there's not a square one without uh, without the indicator in it. So let's do that again. Keeping it wrapped real thin. Alrighty, yep, I like that. Looks pretty aggressive. Uh, the roundness of the trunk is something that bothers me, but nothing I can really do with that just yet. Uh, we do have lips, but uh, not exactly their intended purpose, I don't believe. Unless you want it to be uh, standing straight up. I wonder what these, I guess they're just for the front. What's this one for? Same thing. Yep. Could we use this in any way, though? Hmm. 
<laughs> I like it. I said I wanted something that was different. That might be a little too different. Can I scoot it? Oops, not those. Can I scoot it up any? No. It's gotta be on that part of the chassis. Um... Um... No, I don't think I can go that crazy. <laughs> Let's just bring these back up. And these as well. So I need to cut out for the license plate. I'm out there. The exhausts. I think we can go single exhaust now. If I remember correctly. Yep, you can go just a single exhaust. And you can pick which side. Just want a pretty big exhaust, but just on one side. And then. Uh, anything I want to do on the sides? Maybe some indicators. But clear. Nah, I like the, I like the amber ones. Alright, so there is our base car. What to call it? Of course I'm going to call it the Axis STC. Uh, STC because that is the class this car would be uh, classed in in SCCA Autocross, and it's the first acronym that hit my brain. So, save that. But we also need to make a sports model to fit that turbo motor. So, I'm going to make it look a little bit more aggressive than it already is. So, I'm going to get rid of these vents, put these more aggressive ones in. Um, where's that lip at? That's not fitting too well. Keep stretching it, it will though. Let's try the black one. See with that natural lip in the car, it's probably not going to work too well. That's okay. It's worth trying. Uh, let's see. Vents. No, oh, I want. What do I want? I want bonnet options. There we go. Put a hood scoop in it for that turbo. Let that intercooler breathe. Move it up to the front. Uh, can I put some vents in the back as well? Z06 style uh, brake vents. Uh, what else can we do to make this thing look a little bit more racy? Can we do a diffuser vent and all? I just want to put two of those. Can I just put one? No, I cannot. Um, can I get that closer? Yes. Just like that. So one without the chrome surround is not the one I picked. Oh, body colored. There we go. That's what I was looking for. So now we got the vents. Diffuse the bumper. I'm going to shrink those a little bit. And then the exhausts. Gonna go with a dual. Oops. Get rid of that. Put in these, but just to one side. And shrink those down a little. Actually, I didn't quite like the way that one looked. Is this one a little different? Yeah. Put only times one. And on this side. Check. Perfect. Yep, that looks good. Uh, is there anything else we could do? Hmm. 
about increasing the size of these. This one's going to go way faster, so we need to vent those wheel wells even more. Alrighty. Yeah, I'm, I'm pleased with the changes made there. Looks a little bit more sporty, but not too extreme. Uh, and it looks, you know, the another car of mine that's not Japanese, but that uh, that really struck me in that era was the 96 Viper GTS. Uh, that shape and that body shell was something that was just extremely well done. And even though that car was not technologically superb, uh, it was it was so awesome looking and had this awesome presence to it that made you think, yeah, yeah, I'll pay seventy thousand dollars for that, uh, or at least it made rich people say that. Um, but but that's that's kind of what uh, I think maybe some of this generation lost is that if they wanted to make cars that cost that much, you know. Mark IV Super Turbo was forty, fifty thousand dollars. It 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 looks awesome to me, just more out of nostalgia than anything. Uh, but it doesn't look like a car that's that expensive. Uh, and I don't know that this does either. Um, but that that was the theory I I started this whole thing with, and it was a great way to show all of what the the current build of the game has to offer, uh, except for obviously the multiplayer, which doesn't look like I'm going to have time this episode to do that, uh, so look for that next episode, I will try that out. There's so much content already, uh, it's certainly worth your money to go ahead and pre-order this and start having a ball doing these little theories like this for yourself. But that's going to do it for this episode, thanks everybody for watching, and I'll see you next time.